friends, I'm Miss Kelly from the Highland Park Public Library and welcome to Library in Your Living Room. To continue my series on social emotional learning, in this video I'm going to talk about relationship skills. Relationship skills are a very important component of social emotional learning and they pertain to the ability to form and maintain healthy and rewarding relationships with diverse individuals and groups. In order to develop good relationship skills, kids need to be able to communicate clearly. And effective communication doesn't just include speaking clearly and conveying your ideas appropriately, but it also has to do with understanding body language, facial expressions, and gestures. A good sense of self-awareness can greatly assist in communication skills. So it may sound super obvious, but have lots of conversations with your child. Ask them how their day was, ask them their opinions on different things, ask them specific questions like, what's the funniest thing that happened to you today? It also helps to point out body language. So you can say, I'm crossing my arms because I feel upset. Or you can say, when you roll your eyes at me, I feel disrespected. Another thing that helps with relationship skills is to practice active listening. And active listening is the ability to consciously really pay attention to what someone is saying and respond appropriately. Some foundational skills involved in active listening include appropriate eye contact, regulating thoughts to limit distractions, utilizing facial expressions, and providing oral responses. And these are all really easy things that you can practice with your kids. Learning songs and rhymes by heart is a great way to help your kid develop their auditory memory. Play a repetition game where your kid has to repeat what you say, or play sound games where your kid has to cover their eyes and you make a certain sound like dropping a pencil on the floor or biting into an apple, and your kid has to guess what that sound was. Another important relationship skill is cooperating with others. When kids cooperate, they each become an active member working towards a common goal. Cooperation requires that kids be flexible, have an awareness of themselves and others, take turns, respect each other's thoughts and opinions, and practice effective problem solving. Kids as young as three can begin learning to solve their own problems. You can model this for them by saying, you two seem to be having a problem. What is it? and then prompt each kid to problem solve by asking, what can we do? A great book about cooperating is Want to Play Trucks by Ann Stott. Jack likes trucks. Alex likes dolls. Want to play trucks, asks Jack. Let's play dolls that drive trucks, says Alex. And then later on it says, <laughs> You can't wear a tutu and drive a crane, says Jack. Yes, you can, says Alex. No, you can't, demands Jack. Yes, says Alex. No, shouts Jack. Yes, you can, shouts Alex. No, you can't, says Jack. It wouldn't fit in the driver's seat. Oh, says Alex. Then overalls purple overalls. So Jack and Alex may not have the same interests, but they're both flexible, they respect each other's thoughts and opinions, and they practice pretty effective problem solving. Another important relationship skill is resisting inappropriate social pressure. Good self-management skills can be really effective in helping kids communicate and commit to their decision to not engage with inappropriate or unsafe behavior. We want our kids to make good decisions and we want them to learn to come to their own conclusions. So if your kid tells you about an experience with peer pressure, here are some things you can do. Your child probably wants to have more independence. You can let them know that letting other kids decide what they do is not independence. And you can also talk about what it means to be a true friend. Would a true friend put pressure on you to do this thing that you don't really want to do? No, they wouldn't. A great book about resisting peer pressure is one that you might already know. It's A Bad Case of the Stripes by David Shannon. Camilla Cream loved lima beans, but she never ate them. 
All of her friends hated lima beans, and she wanted to fit in. Camilla was always worried about what other people thought of her. Today, she was fretting even more than usual. It was the first day of school, and she couldn't decide what to wear. There were so many people to impress. She tried on 42 outfits, but none of them seemed quite right. She put on a pretty red dress and looked in the mirror, and then she screamed. Her mother ran into the room, and she screamed too. Oh my heavens, she cried. You're completely covered with stripes. So after a few more strange transformations, um, they finally find out that Camilla is changing all these different colors because she's not eating lima beans. Now how that, uh, how that makes her develop all these different kind of stripe things on her body is beyond me. I'm not sure why, but the moral is the same. You shouldn't stop doing something that you really like to do just because other people don't like it. Another relationship skill is conflict resolution, and that involves coming to a mutually satisfactory resolution to a problem by addressing the needs of all concerned. A good book about conflict resolution is Swimmy by Leo Leone. A happy school of little fish lived in a corner of the sea somewhere. They were all red. Only one of them was as black as a mussel shell. He swam faster than his brothers and sisters. His name was Swimmy. One bad day, a tuna fish, swift, fierce, and very hungry, came darting through the waves. In one gulp, he swallowed all the little red fish. Only Swimmy escaped. He swam away in the deep, wet world. He was scared, and he was very lonely. And then later, we've got... Then, hidden in the dark shade of rocks and weeds, he saw a school of little fish just like his own. Let's go and swim and play and see things, he said happily. We can't, said the little red fish. The big fish will eat us all. But you can't just lie there, said Swimmy. We must think of something. Swimmy thought and thought and thought. Then suddenly he said, I have it. We're going to swim all together like the biggest fish in the sea. He taught them to swim close together, each in his own place. And when they had learned to swim like one giant fish, he said, I'll be the eye. And so they swam in the cool morning water and in the midday sun and chased the big fish away. The last big relationship skill is to offer and seek help when needed. Kids should be encouraged to check their understanding of both academic and social situations. If they hit a roadblock that's preventing them from achieving some goal, they need to know when and how to get help. Asking for help does not signify failure. It actually shows some emotional maturity. And likewise, you should encourage your child to help someone else if they need help, because helping people is a win-win. The person you help feels better and you also feel good. A great book about seeking and offering help is the classic Stone Soup by Marsha Brown. So this book is about three soldiers that are very tired, very hungry, so they enter a passing town hoping to get some food. But all of the peasants that live in that town are already kind of short on supplies, so they do not want to help the soldiers, and they end up hiding their food and saying, no, we don't have any. But then the soldiers come up with a pretty clever idea. We are three hungry soldiers in a strange land. We have asked you for food and you have no food. Well then, we'll have to make stone soup. The peasants stared. Stone soup? That would be something to know about. First, we'll need a large iron pot, the soldiers said. The peasants brought the largest pot they could find. How else to cook enough? That's none too large, said the soldiers, but it will do. And now water to fill it and a fire to heat it. It took many buckets of water to fill the pot. A fire was built on the village square and the pot was set to boil. And now, if you please, three round smooth stones. Those were easy enough to find. The peasants' eyes grew round as they watched the soldiers drop the stones into the pot. 
any soup needs salt and pepper, said the soldiers as they began to stir. Children ran to fetch salt and pepper. Stones like these generally make good soup. But oh, if there were carrots, it would be much better. Why, I think I have a carrot or two, said Francois, and she ran off. She came back with her apron full of carrots from the bin beneath the red quilt. A good stone soup should have cabbage, said the soldiers as they stirred the carrots into the pot. But no use asking for what you don't have. I think I could find a cabbage somewhere, said Marie, and she hurried home. Back she came with three cabbages from the cupboard under the bed. And I think you can see where it's going. So all of the villagers end up bringing their food and they all share a delicious feast of stone soup. Well, I hope this video emphasized the usefulness of relationship skills. It's very important when it comes to social emotional learning. And remember, you can always check out hplibrary.org to see some of the cool stuff we've got coming up at the library. And until next time, bye friends.